Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach and we're taking a beautiful gander over at Playa del Martero. And we're actually going to rename it. <laughs> the name is wrong, and I thank all of you for pointing that out in the comments. It should be Playa de Mataro. And there was something I was planning on doing today right over here. I was going to work on our wildlife overpass. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of a distra distraction. So the Drake company recently reached out to the Lopez brothers after hearing a rumor that there is a significant amount of oil in this area. In fact, if we take a look, we know that to be the case. So they reached out to the Lopez brothers and said, we'd just like to poke around, see if there's actually oil down here. And after a bit of exploration, they did find a significant amount of oil all across the city. And they wanted to figure out if it would be possible to drill in this area. Now, Drake Oil, if you'll recall, does not have any way of extracting oil in Verde Beach. All of it is imported, and that's very expensive. So they would love the ability to be able to drill in Verde Beach. So today, we are going to work with Drake Oil and begin a little bit of drilling here. This might sound absolutely absurd to you, but if you think about it, there are many cities where this has already occurred. The most prominent in my mind being Los Angeles. There are urban oil derricks all over the place in Los Angeles. In fact, if you look at historical pictures like this one of Long Beach, you can see that it, it appears there's a forest behind it, but that's actually oil derricks. But even today, you can find them. Take a look at these pictures of Signal Hill, California in Los Angeles County. Here in a residential neighborhood, oil derrick. Here next to this McDonald's, oil derrick. And it might sound crazy, but think about what the owners of the property are getting. They're getting revenues from these oil derricks, a cut of the revenues, and that is exactly what Drake Oil is offering the Lopez brothers. Obviously having an oil derrick will sink property values in the vicinity, impact people's health and wellness, generate a ton of traffic, but a 25% cut on all that sweet, sweet crude, that'll make the Lopez brothers happy for the time being. So we are going to continue with phase three of our development, and work in oil derricks into our residential neighborhood. So this is a controversial one, but I think it's very necessary. We're also gonna take a look at this, and we're gonna improve this, because this was, this was never very good. I didn't like what I did, so what we're gonna do is build a small harbor as well uh, with both cargo and passenger service. So lots to get to today. I'm really excited, let's dive in. Okay, so as I mentioned, the name of this community is wrong, so let's get that fixed. And interestingly, I think I got this wrong as well. <laughs> so uh, there we go. We've got it fixed. So this is, you know, I, I don't love this. I, I will be honest. Uh, as, a, as a matter of practice, I think it's bad <laughs> to put industrial uses in the middle of residential areas, but it does happen. So we're going to go for it. And I appreciate that this, this being called out in the comments is an interesting idea. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to just pull this way over here and like make a little spot there where we can expand that in the future. And then we'll get rid of all of this stuff. And you might be noticing that my game is running really fluidly right now. I think this is worth pointing out. So I currently, if you take a look here, you can see I'm getting 46 frames a second. I look downtown, I'm still getting 46. The reason for this is I had adaptive prop visibility in my set and it was taking my frame rate right down to as low as 13 to 15 frames. And now that I've taken that out of my mod list, uh, I'm, I'm getting much better frame rates. I can spin around and everything feels super fluid and nice. I guess I've also got this pumped up so that, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> so there we go. And now I'm getting 60 frames a second. That's amazing. Now what we're gonna do is give some thought to this area. Let's upgrade the roads that we're gonna work on today. Okay, so now I think we're back to square one. Maybe we could have another connection right here. Yeah, like that. And I wanna take a look at the oil in this area. You can see this entire little square right here is filled with oil. There's another spot over here and then the outside. Our existing developed area also has oil. I don't think we're gonna add it to the park, although that is an excellent place for uh, oil prospecting, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna avoid that. So let's take our district and stretch it out and cover this area. There we go, I think we'll start here. And in fact, I'm gonna extend the neighborhood over here as well. 
it is absolutely killing me that all of these pads are going away. Because <laughs> I just, I love them so much. And we're going to make sure that they don't go away. All right. So we now have our oil fields set up. And we need to see what is going to be the most appropriate for us. So we've got all of these different options for pumping oil. We've got, obviously, we have an offshore drilling platform. We're not going to use that. But we have these small oil pumps, and I noticed that the pollution here is 30, noise pollution 40, and 18 workplaces. This is, it appears to be four of them put together, and we have, uh, we're getting an extra 20 pollution, an extra 20 noise pollution, and we're getting another 12 workspaces. So I I'm concerned that if we go too large with these oil pumps, we're going to start making citizens get sick. So we're going to want to spread these out and uh, really cordon them off from the rest of the community and then try to hide them because that's something that you'll sometimes see in urban areas. Uh, we don't have the ability to cap them like, like you'll often see, but we do have the ability to use landscaping and fencing to make it look a little bit better. So to start out, I think that the one place we can really get away with one is right here. If you look, if we get it over in the corner here, we don't overlap any residential buildings. So we're gonna do that. And then what I wanna do is make sure that I'm not overlapping any of these little circles. So right here, this is the end point of this one. So we need to make sure that we're spreading it. So one right there as well. Let's see where this circle ended up. We'll have one there. And then we can pump basically in the back end in the exact same spots. So it's not a lot of pumping. When we look at these, this is extracting 4,800 units per week. This one was, I believe it was 8,000. So obviously if you were going for maximum efficiency, you'd go for this, but we are in a residential area. So that is not our game plan or goal. So it's not just that that we wanna do. We wanna also fence these in. So we are going to look at our fences and see what's the most appropriate. So I wanna zoom in here and let's just, we'll have just our angle on and we wanna really give this a sense of its own space. That's pretty good. It's obviously still visible. I'm curious though. Let's take a look at some of our other fencing options. So I use the forestry fence mainly because it's completely blocking what's behind it. So it's, it's very good at screening. But look at this, the ore industry fence is even taller. And the reason I didn't go with the oil fence is it's see-through. So yes, it keeps people out, but you can see right through it. So this actually might be our best alternative. Yeah, I think that's our best alternative. So we're gonna go with that. And I'm going to quickly add these fences around the rest of the derricks. Okay, so we've got our five pumps with fences around them. I believe two of them are operational right now. I do not think that this one is, if we take a look at it, oh, it jumped. So we've got more than half of them operational. Now these are gonna stop working right away if we don't take care of uh, the need for storage. So I think that we need to take a look at that as well. Now, obviously we could put something like this big crude oil tank farm in. They're huge and they're ugly. This might be more appropriate. So this is the oil industry storage. And I think we'll centrally locate this right in the center of our area. It's not quite as unattractive as the other building and it's certainly smaller. We're gonna set this to empty so that it immediately empties out everything once it pumps. So they'll come pick it up and empty it out right away. So I like that a lot. Now I want to think about the residential zoning in this area. And in fact, I'm gonna even pick up my zoning and speed it up or speed up my time frame. Although everything's been going really slow lately and I'm not 100% sure why, uh, but that has been a thing. And I know that some of you have pointed that out in the comments that it seems very odd that my simulation's running so slowly. In fact, I'm gonna try something real quick to see if I can fix this. Okay, so I was able to figure something out. I had to verify the integrity of my game files. And now when we take a look, I have different speeds again, <laughs> so that's very exciting. So we're gonna run this at a moderate speed. 
as we work to build out this area a little bit. We're gonna need lots of fencing again. We're still in fencing mode. We're using our nature reserve fence to get everything set up, but this one's gonna be a bit of a trick because we now have all of these oil fields next to us. So we will utilize some of that fencing right there. Okay, and if you're interested in doing the fencing the way I'm doing it, having angle and road guidelines on can be really helpful. It can also be really challenging. You're gonna be toggling road guidelines on and off because they certainly can have a negative impact on you as you're as you're placing these down. So just it, it's it's a little bit of finagling and and uh, a lot of finessing, but it, it's certainly possible to make this look good. So I'm just dividing these up a little bit, breaking things up, and for the most part, I think getting a pretty good effect. Okay, so with that, we've got our little neighborhood parceled out, and you can see that these are pretty decent sized lots, uh, it, but you know, it has an oil derrick right next to it. That said, at least the people moving in here understand what they're getting into. The people I really feel bad for are right here, the Sterling residents the manor residents, the Cooper residents. They moved in here and they had no idea that this polluting oil derrick was gonna be right in front of their home. And if you take a look, they are seeing the direct impacts. Thankfully, because we've spread these out, we're not seeing a big cluster of impacts, but it's still there and it's still bad. So let's go ahead and get the zoning in place. And then we're gonna do our best to try to minimize the impact of this by landscaping the heck out of this whole place. Because, <laughs> you know, that doesn't necessarily always happen, as you could see in the pictures that I was showing earlier, but I, I do think that if you want this to work, that is kind of how you gotta deal with it. You've gotta landscape it well. So I'm gonna go with some larger bushes, and around this, I'm gonna put some grasses. That wouldn't be easy to maintain back there, so you figure a little unkept grass makes some sense. And you can already see what I was worried about. Right here, not enough buyers for products. This is set to empty. Maybe that's the problem. I'm gonna set it to balanced for now and see if that helps us. Hopefully, by doing that, they'll come out and actually do something and you know, pick up some of this oil because they are the buyers. They are the folks that need to come in here. The other thing we're gonna need to think about, we have our transit routes right here. We don't have any, any well, I guess we do have stops. This might not be the best street for the transit routes anymore. Uh, in fact, once we have these fully pumping, this should be a fairly busy road. And the oil industry is very likely to want these upgraded and to be willing to pay for it. So they are going to fund the rest of the construction of these roads. In fact, with the resident outcry, they are going to fund the wildlife overpass over here as a way to show that they're not just destroying the environment, they're also preserving it. They'll plant some trees and make this a better place to live. And uh, <laughs> it's going to feel like cold comfort to the folks here because they still have this oil industry in the middle of their residential area. So let's go ahead and add some larger trees through here to try to hide some of what's going on. We don't want to get these trees too close to the pump because we don't want it to get tangled in there. But we do want it to be large enough and hidden enough that it's actually producing the effect that we want, which is to screen out some of this. And then I did leave some, some space around this to add some more landscaping. So it'll look very artificial, but <laughs> this this whole endeavor is is you know not great. <laughs> so this is what what uh, this will be our best solution here. And you see, I leave I left these little paths for myself to add tons of landscaping around it. Thankfully, because we have hide it in here, we're not going to deal with some of the impacts of. Uh, the pollution on the landscaping because these trees in the vanilla game normally would look terrible So keep that in mind if you're playing on a console, you might not be able to do what I'm doing right now This is one of the one of the few places right up front in the beginning of the build that took liberties and I I stand by that decision. <laughs> I think it was a good one Okay, so we've we've screened off most of this we've got one more over here that needs some more screening So this 
not not a great place to live in my opinion anymore it used to be and parts of this would be and truthfully the jobs would be a, a great benefit to um, much of the community but we now have this oil being extracted right in the middle of a residential neighborhood so let's take a look at what this does to the sound you can see that this is by far the loudest part of the community in fact a way to resolve this would be to add street trees but adding street trees would take away uh the ability to park on some of these streets might not it might be a good trade-off though so let's go ahead and do that and we can't leave these vanilla trees so let's go ahead we'll put some of these young lindens oh those look so much better and this is a good reminder to me and of course this one doesn't do anything but i'll do it anyway because it makes me feel like I've, I've done something. <laughs> so, uh, this road has been the most controversial road in the entire community, and I need your help fixing it. So, I want to go through and find some landscaping that works. Really, I believe that this is best a two-lane road like this, not a four-lane or a collector. I, I want it to be a smaller collector, a minor collector, if you will. Um, we don't want to direct too much traffic up this way. It might be necessary now, but I still think that this this main road going along the beach is going to be the most important road in the community. And in fact, uh, it, we might have traffic problems if we don't do something about it in the future, but for the time being, we're going to leave it. Um, but I, I want to know what landscaping will look the best here. I saw some suggestions that maybe we need bushes. We could also have smaller trees. And I'm curious about how big those will be. That's pretty large. So we've got kind of the whole spectrum of options here. Uh, the other option would be to go strictly vanilla. Let's get rid of this one. That's not... No one's really going to want that one, I'm guessing. When you take a look, I want to know which trees you think are the most suitable for this main boulevard to the community. And if we take a look, here's why everyone's concerned. We're going to... We're going to obstruct the views of the Capitol, which is really the most prominent, or not the Capitol, but City Hall, which is really the most prominent feature in the community. So we want to make sure we're not doing that, uh, if at all possible. So anyway, this is now building out and we need to add some landscaping to all of the lots within here. So we're going to take care of that right now. But I do want to point out one thing. Our population is doing some things. And uh, one of the reasons this is occurring is we had a huge spike in influx and in deaths. We can take a look at that right now. So you see that we had all of these deaths followed by huge jumps in population. And that is because of influx, massive influx, massive births, and we're going to see massive deaths. They're lagging. So I know that that's coming. I'm not 100% sure when it's going to happen, but I would expect that we lose a lot of people and then rebound just as efficiently as we lost people. So I guess be aware of that uh, and keep an eye on that because it's going to be a thing. Okay, so I went through and I added some landscaping and I also had to remove some homes. I was not super careful with my zoning this time and I'm now paying the price. What you'll notice is that there were some smaller homes through here that uh, sprung up. They look like garages. I mean, it's really small, uh, but I, I still don't want that. These are larger lots. That's what the, the intent was. So we're going to go with that. I've also tried to mix in some landscaping, but one thing I've noticed I haven't done at all is work in any palms. So I want to, to add some palms to here. Uh, I think that's one way of making people feel better about this, this, this whole situation is to add something that that feels like a vacation. And a palm tree feels like a vacation, so we're gonna do it. Okay, so to me this feels like, it feels very California <laughs> in terms of the, the actual layout and, and everything. And these are here, but they're not super obstructive. We are getting a good rate of pumping. I am noticing though that every now and then we see stuff like this, not pumping because this, okay, it's 51% full. I'm gonna set this to empty now and we're gonna see what happens. I'm also seeing this, citizens are sick. The trees help with that as well. They'll soak up some of the pollution, but it's still not good. 
All right, so we need to really crank on this and figure out how to get the oil out of here into the Drake oil industry. Right now, if we take a look, we go into our traffic routes and we have only cargo, or trucks rather. Okay, so let's see where this is going. So we can trace it down here. This truck is moving down, crossing here, across that little bridge, and then going all the way down here. And we can see it stops right here, but you know where it's going. This truck, if we click on it, it's definitely an oil truck truck going to the small pump coming from that industry. Everyone's getting sick. This is terrible. <laughs> but it's not unrealistic. We're going to probably need to speak with the oil company executives and get an extra clinic in here. And they're going to be okay with that because, uh, you know, they don't want to take responsibility for the health problems that are occurring in this area. In fact, they'll put it right across in the neighborhood so that it's really efficient for people to access. And it's well landscaped so that it feels like it's not so bad. <laughs> and we're going to probably see this just get loaded up. Uh, maybe not. I don't know what's going on. Let's look at this. We'll have a large ambulance. Actually, let's set it to random. They can... Oh, no, no, no. We can't do random. We'll do a... We'll do a... We'll do the large ambulance. We're going to need them. I don't know why they're not picking people up. Please. These people are sick. They need to get picked up. <laughs> Apparently that's not their greatest concern. Oh, oh, we got one right here. That's why. Going to a different medical clinic way over here. No way. That doesn't make any sense. That is uh, the other thing that we're going to struggle with is as the city gets bigger and more dispersed, you get some routing and trips that just don't make a ton of sense. And there were mods that could handle that. And uh, we're not using mods, number one. Number two, I believe they were removed from the store. Bipa mentioned this. I think it almost took down New Zealand. So, um, it, you know, it, it's just a, a thing to be aware of. We're going to have some irrational trips, unfortunately. Now, speaking of irrational trips, right now we've got a ton of them driving all the way over here and we have much more efficient ways of handling this. So I want to take a look at our terrain and think a little bit about where it might make sense to put a cargo, uh, a, a cargo boat, a cargo harbor. And I want to make sure that as we place this, I mean, this is, there's really no great land here. Uh, we've got these connections to get over to the volcano uh, if we want to in the future. So I guess my biggest concern then is going to be the view from downtown that we get. So if we're downtown and we're on the beach, I really don't want it over here because that's going to that's going to disrupt what we're seeing over here. So I think back there, hiding it back there, it'll be so small. When you see the size of this ferry, it's just tiny. So I think way back there is where we're going to sneak this thing, be somewhere around right here. So let's let's prep for this. And I'm gonna grab just one notch above beach level or sea level. I don't know if this is it, this might be too low. And we're gonna build a harbor. And I wanna do better than I've done before. So I've, I've been doing a bit of research into this and I, I wanna add a breakwater. Obviously I don't live on a coast. I mean, I have lots of lakes around me, but we don't really have large harbors. <laughs> It's, it's a chain of lakes, so yeah, it's, it's not quite the same thing. So what we're going to do is add additional oil storage, because I think it's going to help. We're going to move this over here, and we're going to add in a cargo harbor. So on one side, we're going to add in these key walls so that we get a nice straight effect so that those roads that are attached actually connect. And uh, then we're going to decorate the other side with some rock features. That looks pretty straight. There we go. So let's go ahead and add in our cargo harbor. And I'm not sure that this is big enough yet. We might need to extend it out even further because as I look at this, we'll just pull this over here. It's not very deep. All of the ships are gonna run aground, I believe. So we could dredge this out. Maybe that's the most appropriate solution. That might be what I do. I might just dredge it out a bit. That said, I don't have my key wall extended far enough. 
and I need enough separation to be able to connect these. That looks like it's just about right. So very good. There is a bump there, and that bugs me. So I'm going to give this another go. Okay, that was worse. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to delete it to make it work right. Okay, so we got it. I had to pause and just play around with it a bit. Uh, I am going to want to extend this out a bit further. I, I, I want to have a turnaround here. So let's extend this out just a little ways. And we'll flood it really well. There we go. Perfect. And we will come back through here with our one ways. And we have no guidelines on. We gotta have guidelines. Well, that'll do the trick. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty good. So with this, we do need this to look a little bit more rational. It looks like we're dipping down a little bit. So I'm gonna take a look at the terrain heights and try to improve this. Because the last thing we want is intermittent flooding at our harbor. That's not going to be acceptable. Okay, that's much better. Now, I want to use these different rock area assets to our advantage. And I think if I use them appropriately and a lot, they're going to look like it's a breakwater. Or not a breakwater, but it'll look like the side of the, of the a rock wall. And I'm thinking that we might actually extend the key wall out or the wall out this way as well. So if you thought I was worried about the node limit, now you know I'm not. <laughs> so we are doing just fine. The other thing I didn't consider that I wanted to, and I might need to go back and fix some of my rock work because of this, is I really want to have some of these storage tanks here. They don't need to be big, but they do, they do need to fit. So I think the smallest ones I have are these ones. Large ones are double, but they're just huge. So let's go for the smaller ones. We'll see what this is going to take us out to. And now I'm going to go back through and add my rocks. Now, it is important to keep in mind that the rocks can hold water out. So you're going to need to take a look at the top to make sure you don't have any weird stuff like this happening. If you do have that, because that can be a permanent thing, uh, you'll, you'll have to flatten the terrain a bit. Not the end of the world, but something to be aware of. Okay, so now I want to dredge up. Uh, and this is what I... Yeah, okay. It's filling it. It's filling it. I'm not going to worry. I need to just calm myself. <laughs> it will be all right. So I'm going to dredge this out a little bit. We are going to need to change our routes here. But before we get to that, I just I want to get the road coming to this area so we can bring this place online. So I'm going to come up and we'll pick our height up here because we know that this is about where we have been. And it's funny, every now and then I can feel the slowing. This is certainly one of those times. All of the, the water work that's going on right now to normalize the water levels and get it back to where it was, that just destroys my speeds. So I'm coming up and I'm using my slope terrain tool to try to make this be a gradual turn, understanding that this is going to be heavy vehicles and buses that are coming over here. So we, we can't, you know, completely forget about that. You gotta be aware of the vehicles that you're expecting to utilize these roadways. So then we'll have that come down here, use our curved road tool with our road guidelines on and hit a rock. <laughs> and apparently the rock is good enough to impact the road. I don't, I don't understand that, but okay. Okay, so it was the whole building on water thing that it didn't like, <laughs> which I think that makes some sense. And I'm gonna stub in a road here for the future and obviously it would be better not to prioritize the movement into the harbor for just general traffic circulation. However, Drake Oil is building this and they are going to try to prioritize the movement that matters to them, which is clearly going to be that movement into the harbor. And then I want to slope this back a bit. 
and really lots of concern about erosion in this particular location. And you see the water is just doing some things. It's terrible. So what that tells me is that something awkward is happening here. I'll need to do a little bit of terraforming to try to fix that. There we go. Water right in there. Perfect. All right. So now I'm gonna, I need to make a connection here with these roads. So let's come through. I think they're at just about the same terrain height. So I'm gonna come through here, right mouse click over here and then find my path and pre-grade this. Okay, and you might be wondering why I don't just follow the beach. My thought here is that it, it makes more sense from a financial standpoint to do all this cutting than it would to try to reinforce significant chunks of the beach. Uh, one of the best comments that I've seen in a while though was actually from an engineer who does this kind of work in the previous video comments. Highly recommend you go check him out. Uh, he explains that it is possible to build on a beach, but there's a lot that goes into it. So there we go. Now I want this to be a highway so we get people moving over here quickly. This will likely be downgraded at some point in the future to a local road, but for the time being, we need to get people here, we need to get them here quickly. So there we go. And I've caught flack for the amount of... Uh, I, I, I really appreciate <laughs> getting rid of these lumpies in the side and the, and the sheer cliffs. I'm going to try to not go crazy with that right now. We'll see how it looks. Every now and then when you're terraforming, you wish you had uh, the ability to move it, uh, or, or undo it, <laughs> rather. Uh, this is one of those times I was using the wrong tool, and then I realized that, you know, partway through, and I was committed at that point, so I had to go and do a bit of extra work, but, you know, it, it, it happens, and I'm not gonna dwell on it, but it's certainly a thing that I wish I could take back. <laughs> so basically, devs, if you're hearing, if you're hearing this, undo it. That needs to be in the next one. <laughs> Okay, it's not perfect, but it's all right. We'll leave that cut there. Obviously, there'd be netting or something here so that there's no mudslides, but I think that we've made this a grand, a, 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 a gradual enough transition that we could live with it. Let's go ahead and get some water underneath here, right underneath the roads, right where it belongs. Although this is a highway, so maybe that's a little different. It'd probably go along the side, but we'll take some liberties. It's a game after all. We'll have some fun with it. Now I've done some things here, some things I'm not proud of, and we're gonna get rid of them. <laughs> so what we'll do, we've, we've gotta bring our ferry path over to here, and I'm actually gonna hold off on that now that I think about it. I'm just gonna sever this route. Uh, we're gonna add the breakwaters in, and I don't know what that's gonna do for us. So let's move our bus route, because we know that that's gonna move. And look at that, they're using the turnaround. Very nice. So now we can get rid of the road at least in the landscaping. Just deleting a thousand or so trees, moving a harbor, and uh, you know, moving the bus routes. Just a small mulligan, per the usual in my builds. <laughs> so we're gonna be just fine. There we go. It's like nothing ever happened, except for that. We'll take care of that. I do want to extend our bike path over here, though. We did remove that, and I think it'd be a nice thing to have here. So why don't we just loop this around? It'll be like our first bike highway. Well, maybe not our first. We've, we have had one in the past. Oh, I really dislike that these these don't have collision with each other because that means that I've got to be very careful. So the rocks and the bike paths will destroy each other. There's no way that I can stop that. So I've just got to be very careful. Even if there was priority, that would be nice. Like, you know, the bike paths have priority over the rocks or vice versa, and one can't destroy the other, then I could prioritize the order in which I'm doing this, but that is not the way it works, apparently. So I guess something to be aware of. I was unaware of that until just now. And uh, that's kind of one of those spur of the moment. I will uh, add this to the build and look what I've done. <laughs> oh, 
This is just killing me. So what this to me is, is I've just got too many rock features here at the, at the shore. So I'll go through and add some of these small ones that only go on the, or there are too many on the, on the sea floor. And these ones that are only on the coast seem to do a little bit better. So we'll add those ones instead. And that floods us out. Perfect. <laughs> Just what I was hoping for. All right, so we need power over here, and I'm going to ignore all the flooding. There we go, and I'm really hoping that this jumps. And I'm guessing it won't, because why would it? <laughs> there we go. Ah! Again. It's still doing it. It's still doing it. That just... Oh, that irks me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, boy. There are some things happening. Oh, it's square now. That's something. All right. It's filling in. All right. I just need to not look at this because it's going to drive me insane if I do. Because it just... It, it, it takes some work. It takes some work. All right. So now that we've got this... Oh, it's doing it over here, too. Please don't do this to me. I want it to work. <laughs> the other thing is I just might have too many rock features here and it, it, the game just doesn't know what to do with it. I'll just get rid of some. Basically until I start seeing things look bad. Okay, so I think that the solution is being a little bit more deliberate with these. I was very, very, very liberal with my use of these before and I think that that just... The game just doesn't like that. So we need to be more careful. The other thing I'm wondering is if it's the, the slope is just too gentle near it. Because I have gotten this to work. And it seems like that's making some improvement. I'm going to step away from the rocks here because we need to get a breakwaters in place. And that's what I'm really interested in right now is making sure that this is resilient from tsunamis. We know that we have a problem. So uh, let's look at where the ships are coming in. This is our path. And we're going to probably need to play with this a little bit to get this to work. So I'm going to select this height here. Okay, so now that we've got this here, I'm going to try my rock thing again, which makes me very nervous, but we're going to do it and see what happens. Well, I like the way it looks. Oh, oh, I don't love that, though. <laughs> he just jumped up here a little bit, so let's pull this in just a little ways. And now we just need to wait and watch and make sure that ships do not careen into this thing. And I'm curious, if we click on this ship out here, it's going to Santa Vegas. I'm just curious if any of these are going to go over to our other harbor. Because that would be ideal. Because we want to get... Basically, I want to, I want the this harbor to go over here and then use the rail to get it into the industry area. I know that's a lot to ask for. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will see. But you see all of these ships coming in and all the flooding. It's lovely. <laughs> just wonderful. Let's let's make ourselves feel better about it by adding some landscaping. So I got my rocks so close in most of these areas that I can't actually place landscaping, which makes me very sad. But I see that the rocks appear to be mostly working now, so I'm very reluctant to do anything to disrupt that. <laughs> so we're going to live with a little bit. I wanted there to be so much landscaping here. Uh, basically kind of a... As a way to try to hide it, make it feel like it's a, a nicer place than it is. It is a cargo harbor, uh, but it doesn't have to to feel terrible, in my, in my opinion. And there we go. So I believe our ships are easily getting through here now. Lake Valley. All right, well... We're not, we're not seeing the activity that I was hoping for just yet, but I'm still holding out hope. Uh, the other thing that I think I, I should have added over here that I'm going to sneak in, in kind of an artificial temporary-ish way, is we have no garbage collection over here. And I really think that that's necessary right now. So do I think cutting into the cliffside to make this happen is a good thing? No, nope. but... I do think we're going to take some liberties here because our little island is dying because of uh, all of the trash. This is not the height of realism or respecting topography. <laughs> we are we are going rogue. 
we are going rogue and it feels good truthfully <laughs> sometimes you just gotta make things happen but at least these rock features have a purpose now so that's that's a good thing and this road as well so there we go this will help us immensely in this area and hopefully the water resolves itself over here it looks good this is the way it's supposed to look it just kind of caresses this get real close we go real fast <laughs> look at this no problems at all love it love it so much so now we can fix our fairies what we're gonna do is just grab this one right here I'm gonna cut this off while it's paused so that I can make a nice curved connection so it looks like this was initially what I was trying to do and that will allow me to grab this before it disappears let's move it right in there now when I resume I can go ahead and delete this without any more issues so there we go much 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 better so yeah it definitely stinks to bring in all the ferry traffic and buses over here but I do think for the long term, consolidating this and coming up with some breakwaters makes a ton of sense. Look at all of this traffic that we have here. It's wild. You get these plumes of traffic. So I'm very curious. I'm going to watch this for just a minute because I do want to see if this is working the way I wanted it to. So first of all, I think I need to set these to empty so that we're exporting things. So they should just be coming in here, just dumping the oil as quickly as they can. I don't want them importing anything. And that might be part of the problem is that it was importing things. As I click through here, I'm not seeing, I was hoping for, but something should spawn here in just a moment and that should help. Okay, we're not seeing it just yet, but I have faith that this is gonna happen and look at our population. We lost 10,000 people. We haven't even done anything. We just, we've actually added residential zoning. So that's wild. Uh, nobody's coming over here. Hopefully that changes. It's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to have to to have faith that some of these things that we're working on right now are going to be valuable because I, I feel like this is going to work, but it's going to take a little while. We see at least they're bringing in loads, which is going to help ensure that these commercial properties over here have what they need to survive. So I think... With that, there's really only one thing to do, and that's zoom in and have a brief city tour. Okay, and there's something very strange happening here. Do you see all, well, all of these passengers at the Hamilton experience? I don't know what is going on, but for whatever reason, no one's getting picked up. At least not on the Ferry Line 7. This one needs more boats. So this Ferry Line 6 is pinging back and forth. And there's a ton of people that want to switch. So I'm going to up, up this to three, and hopefully that's enough. Ferry line seven, there's a ton of stops here. I don't, we have, we've got the Hamilton experience. There's 19, we've got this downtown and then over here. And for whatever reason, it's not picking people up over here. Oh, oh, now it is, now it is. I'm gonna take the number of vehicles down though. We only need maybe one or two, truthfully. Uh, I think we'll go with two just so that it's a little bit quicker, uh, but besides with, with that withstanding, I don't, I don't know that there'd be a lot of demand for more than that. So when we take a look at this, it still says zero, but I, I see that there are some passengers coming this way. So that's a good thing. On the bus, totally empty. <laughs> so let's look at our line details here. We had 12 buses running that. 
we need one. We can make it a big bus. That's fine. We'll make it a bendy bus, but we don't need that many. This should be just, just fine. Uh, I still have not seen any boats making the trip that I'm hoping they make. I, I have faith that this is going to happen at some point. So we're just going to need to keep an eye out for that because eventually I believe that a, we're going to see a cargo ship come in from here and go over here, which will be really helpful for our oil industry. And as we look at the industry now, we are, we are producing 27, uh, 40, 42 barrels, outputting 16, which means that we are processing some, which is good. That is good. We're only importing just a little bit right now. That is awesome. Before we were importing 100% of our oil and uh, now it's our own production that is leading to the production of plastics and petroleum. So that is good. We are becoming a more self-sufficient and self-reliant city. And that's never a bad thing. And if we take a look now, there are health problems, but they're, they're getting picked up very, very quickly. So I'm, I'm as satisfied with a residential oil industry as I can be. It's still producing. We don't have any more of those uh, little symbols showing that production is stopping. If we take a look here, it's still pumping, pumping away and doing its thing, which means that the cargo harbor has had its intended, uh, it, it, its intended purpose has been met. Right here, we've got a sick person. Hopefully they are resolved quickly. Interestingly, I saw an ambulance come here. Um, <laughs> they took the person away and it still says that the person is sick. So multiple people must be sick in here. So that's certainly unfortunate. And maybe that gives, you know, maybe this just the game is not gonna ever like this and we'll need to back it up even further. I think I'm gonna give that hypothesis a shot. So I've added a bit more separation there. So these will be skinny weird houses, but they'll be on these big lots. It'll be great. <laughs> so they'll be just fine. And I'm curious, are any of these homes leveling up? What's the land value like? It is bad. They didn't get a park in this area, which is something we're going to have to resolve very soon. I think we're going to work in the nature reserve next. And wow, you can certainly see the winners and the losers in Playa de Matero. Uh, you see that uh, on, the, on the east side of the city, Everyone is wealthy. On this side, everyone's poor, which is really, really sad. Um, land values, oh, we, we do have some upgrading over here. Oh, wow, level three in the middle of the oil industry. <laughs> so I, I guess it's naturally leveling up. Maybe those jobs are helping. And I think that we are going to, I gotta click on a couple more of these. Owner, Cargo Harbor, going to Cargo Hub. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Cargo Harbor. Cargo Hub, we have done it. We have done it. We have created a little supply chain loop that is going to send boats from here all the way over to here, picking up the oil produced here and processing it right over here. That is beautiful. I love it. I love it so much and I have to leave it here. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one where we will build that wildlife overpass. I am absolutely dedicated to doing that in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.